Consider the tragedy of uh, Zelensky, the president of Ukraine. See, this poor actor, because that's what he is, he's an actor. And he was an actor up until 2018, just four years ago. Well, this actor, he's got a ton of money. You know that? Yeah, he's got over $800 million outside of Ukraine. And $800 million for a, a country whose economy was only about $150, $160 billion, Okay, That's an enormous amount of money for Zelensky. And of course, he didn't earn it by acting. He earned it by stealing it, you know, by the corruption of Ukraine, right? Anyway, this guy has got all this money. He's got houses in Italy and Miami. I mean, like real mansions. I mean, really nice places, you know? But the thing is, he, he can't get to them. He can't get out of the hole that he's in. He's stuck in Kiev. He's stuck like a fly on flypaper. And he's got a whole bunch of people holding him down. And his future depends on keeping these different people happy. See, on the one hand, he's got the uh, oligarchs who put him in power, people like Kolomoisky and other oligarchs. I mean, it's a whole little cornucopia of oligarchs who supported him and put him in his position of power. They bought his way into the presidency and he owes them and they control the money that he's got outside of Ukraine because he owns it, but if somebody else has the ability to destroy what you have, well, then you don't really own it, right? You just, uh, you're borrowing it almost, right? And the oligarchs, they have the ability to destroy his fortune legally by simply handing over documents showing how this fortune was stolen. And so Zelensky could potentially lose this lovely little nest egg he's got, you know, the lovely mansions in Italy and all the rest of it. He can lose them if he doesn't make his oligarchs like Kolomoisky happy. On the other hand, he's got in Kiev, he is surrounded by a bunch of lunatic, crazy people, right-wing, neo-Nazi nutcases. And, and I mean, when I say nut, uh, right-wing, I mean, when I say nutcases, they are nutcases. And when I say right-wing, they're not like, like, for instance, myself, I am right-wing. Yeah, I'm a right-wing uh, person. I am a man of the right, but I'm not crazy. And I believe in human dignity and I believe in human rights. These people around, around Zelensky are crazy, man. They are real neo-Nazis. Hmm? You got to understand that. They are not, you know, uh, uh, Barry Goldwater Republicans. No, 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 no. These are, you know, Heinrich Himmler Nazis. That's what they are, okay? People like the right sector, people like uh, S14, uh, Azov Battalion. Well, there are never more. The Adon Battalion, Adar Battalion, rather. All of these people, they control him. And if you don't believe me, look up a video that's on YouTube and Twitter. It's all over the place. It's easy to find where Zelensky, a couple of years ago, before the conflict started, he went down to the Donbass and he wound up talking with some of the soldiers there, some of the right-wing, crazy, neo-Nazi soldiers there. And they basically told him right to his face, look, if you pull out of the Donbass, we're going to kill you. <laughs> we're going to kill you and get rid of you and put somebody else in charge who will do what we want. Mm -hmm. That video is out there. It's it's rather shocking. It's It's actually on my Twitter feed, so go check it out if you want to. But the point, and the very serious point, is that, see, in a very real sense, he is held hostage by these far-right neo-Nazis. They are holding him hostage in Kiev. And he has to please them and do what they want. And what they want is to continue the war at all costs. Because the reason they want to continue the war is they're terrified of being captured by the Russians. Because the Russians have said outright that the second that they get these guys, once they capture them, oh boy, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be, you know, <laughs> the Russians are going to go all Russian on their ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, they're terrified of the Russians and they want this war to continue no matter what. They want it to continue to the last Ukrainian. And right now, word is a lot of the POWs that are getting picked up by the Russians, they're older guys, guys in their 40s, guys who back in February had not held a weapon. Uh-uh, they were not holding weapons in, back in February, and now they're POWs, they're, they're old men who got pressed into service, dragooned by the Zelensky regime. Why? Because the Zelensky regime's army is collapsing. The losses are unbelievable. They're off the charts. Something like uh, 500 killed per day, per day. That's the pace of this grinding war. Mm -hmm. And this war should have ended 
The Zelensky regime should have sued for peace quite some time ago. But Zelensky can't sue for peace because of those oligarchs who control his money. Can't sue for peace because of the crazy neo-Nazis surrounding him and threatening his life and the life of his family. And he can't go and sue for peace because of the dictates from Washington. Washington, the State Department, and also Lloyd Austin at the Pentagon, they want Zelensky to continue pursuing this war because they are saying now outright that this is a proxy war and they want um, Ukraine to degrade Russian forces by as much as they can, wear down the Russians. That's the motto in Washington. And so Zelensky, the actor, is trapped. He can't get out of Kiev. He can't sue for peace. He can't, you know, fuck off to Miami, to his mansion, and chill out and sip margaritas and whatnot, or, you know, start doing as much coke as there possibly can be in Miami. No, no. The cokehead of Kiev is stuck in Kiev, and he has to toe these lines. And the tragedy is that in towing these various lines, in pleasing these various groups, the people who will suffer, who will die needlessly, are the Ukrainian people. And the Ukrainian soldiers will die for nothing. And the Ukrainian nation will be destroyed and will be annihilated because Zelensky is trying to save his hide. He cares more about his hide than standing up and doing what's right. He could, right now, go on TV, bring in the international press, do a live broadcast, and in the live broadcast say, we are ready to surrender. And once those words are out of his mouth, you can't take them back. He could do the right thing. And the thing is, if he were to do that, he would be untouchable. Anybody who tried to hurt him, be it the oligarchs, the crazy neo-Nazis, or the people in Washington and the CIA critters that are all over Kiev at this time, because there are, well, none of them would be able to do anything to Zelensky. They wouldn't. Because if anything happens to him after he offers peace, sues for peace, everybody would say, no, it's, it's wrong, and the whole thing would collapse. Hmm? He could do the right thing, the brave thing, the necessary thing to save the lives of innocent people, thousands of innocent people, thousands of young soldiers and now not so young soldiers who are going to die for nothing. He could do that. But instead, he's trying to save his own hide and he will give up anybody and everybody in order to succeed. Success for him is his survival no matter how many Ukrainian bodies he has to step over.